Alrighty. So good afternoon and welcome to this informational webinar on Social Security Survivor Benefits hosted by U.S. Senator Bob Casey's office and the Social Security Administration. We're grateful for everyone taking the time to join this call today. I want to start by introducing myself and the other panelists on this call. My name is Andrea Guscott and I am one of Senator Bob Casey's constituent advocates. Also on this call from Senator Casey's office is constituent advocate Robert Balunas, and from the Senate Aging Committee, we have Madison Sloat joining us. From the Social Security Administration, we are excited to introduce Kimberly Stevens, who is Social Security's Public Affairs Specialist. We're grateful for her willingness to join our office for today's webinar. Before we get started, I will quickly note that if anyone has questions, please hold them until the end of the presentation when we will have a Q&A session. We ask that you please keep your questions general and applicable to as many people as possible since this is a public call. If you have any questions regarding your own specific situation, contact information for Senator Casey's office and Social Security will be provided during the presentation for you to reach out to directly. At this time, I'm going to turn the call over to Kimberly with Social Security to delve more into the specifics. Good afternoon. I appreciate you having me today. Uh, today with Social Security, we're going to go over understanding survivor benefits. And this is a very sensitive topic, but it's very important to understand the nuances behind Social Security survivor benefits. So I hope we gain some understanding of this program and then how to reach out to Social Security when you need assistance during that time in your life. Before we even begin, I do want to start with some new and noteworthy topics that might be of interest to you. The first one being That, as you may have already noticed, the Social Security has resumed more in person appointments as of April 7th, and they've also allowed for in person interviewing in person services at a local Social Security office. As we expand in person service, we strongly encourage you to continue to go online, call us for help and schedule appointments in advance. If you do have to visit a local office, we do want to make you aware that we are still following COVID-19 guidelines. We do ask that you do a self-assessment of your health before you enter the office. If you are sick or you've been exposed to COVID, we do ask that you remain home and conduct your business by phone or on our website, ssa.gov, which I'll go over those features in just a few moments. If you do visit the office, we do require masks. We will provide them for you if you do not bring yours. Hand sanitizer will be available. Office space will be limited because we will be practicing social distancing. So there won't be as many places to sit or to stand. So just wanna keep that in mind. If you do come to the office, we do ask that you come alone unless you need help. If you need assistance, you may bring a visitor with you but just again, remember that the office space may be limited. Um, you do not need to have an appointment to visit a local social security office, but just during this time where we're exercising these precautions, you may have a longer wait than normal. Some of our busiest times are on Mondays, the morning after a federal holiday, and the first week of the month. So just keep those times in mind. And if you can conduct your business around those times, or as online at ssa.gov or via phone, that would probably be your other better two options. Another topic that uh, we would wanna make you aware of is a Medicare update. So if you were unable to enroll or disenroll in Medicare because you were unable to reach the Social Security Administration after January 1st of 2022, you'll be granted additional time. We'll allow you through December 30th of 2022 to conduct your Medicare business of either enrolling in Medicare Part A or B or disenrolling requests. So just be aware of that. That may have affected you during that time. So we're gonna extend that time period so you can conduct your Medicare business um, accordingly. I do wanna go over our online services um, 
just to make you aware of the many options that we do have available via our website, which is ssa.gov. And as you look at this slide, you're gonna see that the this is the face web, the front facing part of our website. So this is the standard format that ssa.gov you'll see when you log on. The pictures may change, but the content should be very similar. We just make sure that you are on ssa.gov. Avoid using any other type of .org, .coms. Um, ssa.gov is the official site for social security. Along with our front facing website, as you've seen those pictures, if you scroll down just a little bit lower than that, you're gonna see some of the online services that are available to you. You can review your information. You can apply for benefits. You can manage your My SSA account, which we're gonna discuss here in just a moment. You can also find a lot of information and many, many things can be answered by going to ssa.gov. A lot of your questions will be resolved just by visiting our website and you may not necessarily need that phone call or need an appointment. At the very bottom of our front paging website, you are going to see additional resources. Now this is gonna, as you can read these here, replace your social security card. It's gonna give you information if you need to help an individual with applying for benefits, how to contact us, um, whether it's by phone or whether you need to visit an office, it'll give you directions in that. One of the ones I do wanna highlight is the closing in emergencies. But let's say you do have a scheduled in-office appointment and for some reason we had maybe a thunderstorm go through, we had some power outages, something of that nature. You can simply go there, type in your zip code and it's gonna give you the office, your local office, and it's gonna tell you whether that office is opened or closed or if they had to close early, things of that nature. So that's a good one if you are going to visit the office to make sure that they're open before you have to waste a trip going there. So as you can see, there's lots of other information there as well that might help answer some of your questions. I did mention this previously. I said I would talk about this, creating a My SSA account. This is your personal account with Social Security. Whether you receive benefits or do not receive benefits, I encourage you to enroll in this account so you can conduct much of your business with Social Security through this account. Now, as you can see, if you're not receiving benefits, this is going to the time where you want to plan for your retirement, a plan for your benefits. You can get estimates on how much you're going to receive. It's going to have your detailed earnings listed there, the year you worked, how much you worked, how much you've contributed to Social Security and Medicare taxes. You can receive a letter that states you do not receive benefits from Social Security yet. You may need that for several different purposes and that's available to you. If you've applied for a benefit, you can check the application of your status. You can also review your social security statement. If you already receive benefits, well, this is even better for you. You can set up or change your direct deposit. You can get the social security 1099, which is a critical form when you're filing for income taxes and you do receive social security benefits. You can opt out of some mail notices for those that are available online. So instead of receiving it in the mail, you can receive it under your My Social Security account. You can print your verification letter should you need that for a different purpose. You can also change your address. You can also receive a replacement Medicare card. And if you live in certain states, you can get a replacement Social Security card through your My Social Security account. So it is a great account to have while conducting social security business. And next up, right before we get into our primary topic of the day, I do wanna mention social security with regards to scams and fraudulent activity. Now, occasionally, if you do have business going with ongoing with social security, we will reach out to you. We'll make that phone call and you know, and when we do speak to you about your social security, we do have to identify you. So we have to ask you for your name, your social security number, your date of birth, and perhaps some other key elements. So we know we're speaking to the right individual and that we're providing information to the correct person. However, if you are not 
conducting ongoing business with Social Security, you're not expecting to hear from us, and you do get a call and you suspect it may not be Social Security, but they say they are, you do not have to provide any information. Even if it is a legitimate Social Security call, you can hang up, you can call Social Security directly and ask if we were trying to reach you and assist you with Social Security official business. Social Security is never going to threaten you for information. We're not going to pose legal action if you fail to provide us with information. So, in any, all, we always say better safe than sorry. Um, in the cases that you do receive a call and you do feel that it might be fraudulent, once again, just hang up. Do not give out any of your personal information. You can report that call to the Social Security Administration. Uh, you can do that online at SSA.gov, or you can certainly call us and report that fraudulent activity. And now to the you know final, the premier topic of today's discussion is survivor benefits. This is, and as I said before, very sensitive uh, topic, um, but it is key to understand the elements behind survivor benefits, how to receive survivor benefits, who qualifies for this type of benefit. So we're going to go over these features today. Just a little bit of background in case you may not already be aware. When you do start working, you will start paying Social Security taxes and Medicare taxes. That all sets you up for to receive potentially Social Security benefits. Now, as this works, this is a federal payroll tax. It's deducted from your paycheck. It is matched by your employer and then reported to the IRS. You would contribute 7.65% of your gross earnings towards your Social Security benefits, and your employer matches that. When you're contributing to Social Security and Medicare, as you work and pay into this program, you are becoming insured for benefits. These benefits can include retirement, disability, survivor's benefits, which is the highlight of today's uh, feature, dependent beneficiary, dependents of beneficiaries, as well as Medicare. Of course, in the event that you lose a loved one, or if you're simply preparing for yourself and preparing your family in the event that you may pass away, this is what we're primarily going to talk about today. Who can receive survivor benefits? So, in the event that the wage earner, this would be the individual that has worked, paid into Social Security, and has earned that insured status, who can receive off of their record if they should pass away? First, a child may receive off that. If there's a child under the age of 18, or if they are still in high school, they can be paid up to the age of 19 or high school graduation, whichever occurs first, they can receive survivor benefits. If you have a child who is found disabled as an adult by Social Security before the age of 22, they can receive a survivor benefit as a disabled adult child. Or if you are the spouse of a wage earner that passed away or the divorced spouse of a wage earner that passed away. You may be able to receive survivor benefits off the wage earner's record. The earliest this individual can file for uh, survivor benefits as a spouse would be as early as age 60, unless they are disabled. If you are a disabled spouse and the wage earner passes away, you can you can receive survivor benefits as early as the age 50. Of course, we would need a disability decision on your case in order for you to, to pay you that benefit at that time. And if you have a child in care who the child is under the age of 16, you as a surviving spouse can receive a benefit regardless of your age. You would receive that benefit up to the age of when your child turns 16 or if you're caring for a disabled adult child, you may continue to receive that benefit regardless of your age. A little bit more information on surviving spousal benefits. We, we've discussed that children can receive 
spouses can receive, divorced spouses can potentially receive off of a wage earner's record. So if a spouse files for benefits, they can claim survivor benefits, as I mentioned, at the age, between the age of 60 and full retirement age. If they file at the age of 60, that is considered under full retirement age, they can receive 71.5% of the wage earner's full benefit amount. And every month they wait past the age of 60, their benefit amount would increase. So if they don't file for benefits at 60 and they wait till maybe age 63, that benefit amount is gonna be a little bit higher. So every month past the age of 60, your benefit amount would increase. It would be paid 100% of the wage earner's full benefit amount if you wait to file till your full retirement age. Now, full retirement age, as I mentioned, if you wait till that time, you would get 100% of the wage earner's full benefit amount, meaning it's an unreduced benefit. So for survivor benefits, I mentioned full retirement age. You can find that information on ssa.gov, but I'll just briefly mention it's a little bit different than the standard retirement full retirement age. So when you're looking that up, you can type in survivor full retirement age and it will give you a listing of exactly when your reti full retirement age is when we're looking at survivor benefits. It depends on the year you were born. So for example, if you were born in 1962, your full retirement age would be 67. Again, you can find the detailed listing of that on our website at ssa.gov. I do want to bring up benefits for same-sex partners and families. As of June 15th, June, excuse me, June of 2015, same-sex couples have a constitutional right to marry in all states and have that marriage recognized by other states. Social Security recognizes same-sex couples and marriages in all states and some non-marital legal relationships, such as civil unions or domestic partnerships. For more information as to whether your relationship is considered a legal partnership for Social Security purposes, you do need to contact Social Security and we can go over that information with you. Relationship status, as you can see, is key when we're determining if someone is entitled to Social Security retirement, spousal benefits, survivor's benefits, including children, disability benefits, and Medicare benefits. And as I just said, children or stepchildren can also be entitled to benefits based on the relationship to the wage earner. Please make a note that if you yourself were in a same sex relationship with a partner who passed away, you may qualify for Social Security survivor benefits based on your partner's record. So based on their work history, you may qualify for survivor benefits. If one of the following were true, if you would have been married at the time of your partner's death, if state laws had not prevented you from doing so, or you would have been married longer, if not for unconstitutional state laws that prevented you from marrying earlier. So those are some key elements as well that may fit the category of being eligible for some survivor benefits. And again, you may need to reach out to Social Security for more information pertaining pertaining to your specific scenario. I just wanted to give you a little comparison from what a spouse would receive if the wage earner is still living versus a surviving spouse where the wage earner has passed away. So a surviving spouse, or, or excuse me, a spouse where the wage earner is living, they can receive benefits as early as age 62 where a surviving spouse can receive as early as age 60, or if they're found disabled by Social Security rules, as early as age 50. Now you notice in the side that has the spouse with the living wage earner, there's not a disabled spouse category. The disabled spouse category only applies for surviving benefits. As you can see on the next column down, 50% if you wait until your full retirement age or later is what a spouse could receive off the wage earner. So if the wage earner's full retirement age, let's say was $2,000 and you, the spouse are eligible for spousal benefits and you're at full retirement age, you could receive $1,000, 50% of 
of what the wage earner would receive in full retirement benefits. Surviving spouse is going to receive a little bit more because they've lost the income of the wage earner. So if they file at age 60, it's going to be 71.5% of the wage earner's full benefit amount. And again, every month they wait, that benefit amount would increase. On the spouse with the living wage earner, if they if less than 50%, if you start before full retirement age, you take a reduction for each month you take the benefit early. Again, if you're filing under full retirement age as a living a spouse with a living wage earner, you do take a little bit of a reduction because you're receiving it longer. On the surviving spouse side, if you're at full retirement age, you will receive 100% of the wage earner's full benefit amount at full retirement age if you qualify to meet all the other conditions. Okay, I know many people will ask, well, what if I am insured on my own record? I've worked and I've paid into Social Security, and I also qualify for survivor benefits. So let's say if you were taking your survivor benefits at age 60, you're taking a little bit early, and you've worked and paid into it, retirement benefits begin at age 62. So if you receive those survivor benefits at age 60, but then you turn 62, we can look at your record and determine if your benefit amount is more based on your work history. We can switch you over to receive retirement benefits off of your record. Or you're more than welcome to take your retirement as early as age 62 if you want and hold off on filing for that survivor benefit until you reach full retirement age. But of course, we're going to look at whichever benefit is higher for you at that time. So you do have some choices when it comes to receiving survivor benefits. And that is something you will talk over with a Social Security representative at that time. Another key element when it comes to filing for survivor benefits is working. Will work affect your survivor benefits? And it's going to depend on how old you are when you're receiving that benefit. So if you're under your full retirement age and you'll, you are receiving a survivor benefit, we will look at your wage, your earnings, your current earnings, and you'll fall subject to something called the annual earnings test. So under the annual earnings test, if you're filing under full retirement age and you gross $19,560 or more, we will hold one for every $2 out of your survivor benefit. The very year you reach your full retirement age, and again, your full retirement age is based on the year you were born, and then you can earn a little bit more. It's $51,960 up to the very month you reach your full retirement age. If you exceed that during those months, we do hold one for every $3 out of your Social Security. Now, the very month you hit your full retirement age, there's no limit. You no longer are subject to the annual earnings test. So it's important to understand how working would affect your survivor benefits. I do want to add that when we're looking at working while receiving survivor benefits, and I talk about full retirement age, we are talking about the standard full retirement age, not the survivor full retirement age. So I'm going to give you exa some examples here for a full retirement age for an individual receiving Social Security retirement benefits. If you were born between 1943 and 1954, that's 66 years of age. If you were born in 1955, it's 66 years and two months. 1956 is 66 years and four months. 1957 is 66 years and six months. 1958 is 66 years and eight months. 1959 is 66 and 10 months. Anybody born after the year of 1960 or later, their full retirement age is 67. So this is the age we are gonna look at when we're applying the annual earnings test. So just be aware of that when you're looking at that. 
And we can't tell you you cannot work or you shouldn't work. With Social Security, we just want you to be aware of how work will affect your benefits when you're receiving a survivor benefit. There are two other types of survivor benefits that may not be as commonly known. One of them is called the lump sum death payment. This is a one-time payment that's usually paid to a surviving spouse. Children can meet the requirements to receive this payment, but there are certain conditions for that. So we will look at that when you do file for survivor benefits. We will look at is the lump sum death payment payable? And again, it's only a one time $255 payment. It is not always paid out when a wage earner passes away. It just depends on the situation, if there's a surviving spouse or if there's children that might qualify. Another benefit that may not be as well known is called parents' benefits. So if you are the wage earner and you have a parent who is 62 years of age or older and you're supporting them with at least one half of your support and you're insured for Social Security and you pass away as the wage earner, your parents may qualify to receive a survivor benefit off of your record. So that, again, is a scenario you want to discuss with a Social Security representative to go over the details of that. But I did want to make you aware of that type of program Social Security offers. So how do I apply for survivor benefits? I, I, you know, I've had a, my spouse who worked and paid into Social Security just recently passed. You know, I know I'm at least the age of 60, or if I'm a disabled spouse, you know, I'm at the age of 50, or you might have minor children and the wage earner passed with small children left behind. How does that work? How do we receive those benefits? So if the individual who might be qualifying for these benefits are, is not receiving benefits already through Social Security, you will need to make an appointment. And we do want you to make an appointment as soon as possible. So and we know it's a hard time, but as soon as you receive that information, you do need to contact Social Security. And we're going to show you how in just a minute to schedule an appointment for that benefit. If, on the other hand, you're already receiving benefits, if you're, let's example, a spouse and you're already receiving spousal benefits and you're the wage earner passes away, the higher paying individual passes away, you'll generally not need to file an application for the survivor benefits. It's usually an automatic transition. So we'll transition you from spousal benefits to the survivor benefits. And oftentimes we can automatically pay the lump sum death payment as well. So that's a key, key important feature. You may not have to schedule an appointment. And again, if you need confirmation as to whether you fall in that category or not, that's a quick phone call um, and a very quick answer that, yes, you've already been converted to the survivor benefit. We've already included your lump sum death payment in that if you qualify for those uh, benefits. Now, if you're getting retirement or disability on your own record, you're not on your spouse's record and your spouse passes away. Again, you'll need to contact Social Security to apply for that survivor benefit. Then we're going to check to see you know, what's the highest amount we can pay you on whose record? Okay, so we're always looking at if it's yours, yours is the higher amount, then that's what we'll pay you. If your spouse's is the higher amount, that's what we'll pay you. Now, how to actually, we know if we're, you know, how to actually apply for benefits. I've mentioned several times to reach out to Social Security. I'm just going to briefly state what you can do online. You can file online for retirement, spouse, disability, or Medicare benefits. So all those can be done online. Survivor benefits, however, is one that that feature is not available through SSA.gov, so you will need to call us. You can schedule a phone appointment by calling our national 800 number, which is 1-800-772-1213. That's 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. You can schedule an in-office or phone appointment, whichever you prefer. Uh, the the in-office appointment 
can also be scheduled at 1-800-772-1213. And again, survivor's claims can only be done by phone appointment or in-office appointment. If it's done by phone and we would need documents, um, we will tell you exactly the process to get those documents to us. So very rarely will we need an in-office appointment for a survivor claim. Now, how to reach Social Security in general, even, even if survivor benefits doesn't apply to you at this time, some of the best ways to get information from Social Security is through our website, I've already mentioned several times, is ssa.gov. By creating that MySSA account, which is ssa.gov slash my account, that's where you're going to get information pertaining to your personal work history, your personal benefits are behind that portal. If you want more information on what I can do online, you can go to ssa.gov slash online services. If you want to email us, you are welcome to do that. There's the email address there listed. But if you forget that, you don't write it down or you don't have access to that this slide again, you can go to ssa.gov and under that box of additional information that I sent you, under there at the bottom, it'll say contact us. Under the contact us segment will be that email address. It'll also give you our locator, our ssa.gov slash locator will give you the address of your local office. Representatives are available Monday through Friday at local Social Security offices from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. You can also, as I already mentioned, call our national 1-800 number at 1-800-772-1213. We have live operators available Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. We do offer some 24 hour automated telephone services. So if you need a benefit verification, you need proof of how much you receive in social security. You need a replacement 1099 in order to file your taxes. You'd like an application for extra help with Medicare prescription drug costs. You'd like an application for a replacement social security card, or if you need to replace a Medicare card, you want to check on the status of your claim, or you simply need the address and phone number of your local office, you can call the 1-800-772-1213 line 24 hours a day, go through the automated feature of submitting that request. So as you can see, there are several different ways to reach out to Social Security um, to receive assistance. And that is the end of the presentation today. I want to thank you so much for participating. Thanking you for allowing me to present, present this information on Social Security as well, well as some other uh, key information about our online services, how to reach out to Social Security, some of the information pertaining to uh, in-office services that we're offering now as since the pandemic has started, we are now open, the offices are available if you should need them for an in-person visit. I appreciate your time and I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you so much for sharing that important information about survivors benefits, Kimberly. I am now going to turn over the call to Madison from the US Senate Special Committee on Aging. Thanks, Andrea. Um, as she said, my name is Maddie Sloat, and I lead Senator Casey's work on Social Security and Consumer Protection Policy on the Senate Aging Committee. As you may know, Senator Casey is also chairman of the Senate Special Committee on Aging, which provides services and advances policy on behalf of older adults and people with disabilities. In addition to the Senator's DC and Pennsylvania offices, the Aging Committee also serves as a resource for constituents. Thank you. <laughs> Part of our uh, work involves the development of bipartisan products that can be mailed or accessed online by individuals across the nation. These products include our Consumer Fraud Prevention Guide and related products, which provide information about common scams targeting older adults and tips on how to avoid them. We also have developed brochures and reports providing information on retirement planning and financial literacy for older adults and people with disabilities. These resources are available in both English and Spanish. 
The committee also operates a fraud hotline, which is available 9 to 5 p.m. Eastern time, Monday through Friday. It is answered by a live caller or responded to via voicemails left on the hotline and can direct individuals who have experienced a scam towards local, state, and federal assistance and resources, including scams impersonating the Social Security Administration, as Kimberly mentioned today. You can call the Aging Committee's general line at 202-224-5364 and the fraud hotline at 1-855-303-9470. Or you can visit us at www.aging.senate.gov. Thanks so much. And I'll turn it back to you, Andrea. Thanks. Thank you for that information, Maddie. I'm now going to provide an overview on how Senator Casey's office may be of assistance to constituents regarding social security issues and navigating federal agencies. Senator Casey's office of constituent services consists of a team of constituent advocates who assist constituents who are experiencing issues with a federal agency. This includes, but is not limited to social security benefits, missing passports, IRS problems, VA benefits, immigration snags, SBA concerns, and more. After receiving written permission, our office is able to follow up with the federal agency on a constituent's behalf to check on the status of pending claims or appeals, ask questions, relay information and concerns, and demonstrate Senator Casey's interest in a matter. Under the law and rules of the U.S. Senate, we cannot force a federal agency to act in someone's favor. It's also important to note that if we cannot provide assistance, such as with a state or a private entity, we can refer constituents to someone who can best help. With regard to Social Security, we can assist constituents who are having difficulty contacting Social Security or have questions about applying for survivor benefits. We can also answer questions about widowers or surviving divorce spouses benefits child's benefits, mother-father benefits, uh, when they have a child under 16 or the child is disabled, as well as parent benefits. We can also assist if a constituent has questions about their payment amount or any missing payments. In some cases, we can also get an update on an appeal. We can also contact the IRS if there is an issue processing a deceased taxpayer's return or contact the Railroad Retirement Board for those who had worked on the country's railroads and have retirement benefits through the board. We may need to reach out to the Railroad Retirement Board to notify the employee's last railroad employer that the employee is now deceased and request a report of service months needed to qualify um, the employee's survivor for an annuity. If you would like to request assistance from Senator Casey's Office of Constituent Services, either with a Social Security question or for an issue with another federal agency, please do not hesitate to contact our office at 717-231-7540 or toll free at 866-461-9159. You can also reach out to via Senator, Senator Casey's website at www.casey.senate.gov. And um, we will now open this portion of the presentation for questions for Social Security or Senator Casey's office. If you have a question, you may click the raise hand button at the bottom of the participants list to indicate that you have a question. I will call on participants that have questions one by one and unmute you. Please note that this is a public call, so we ask that you please keep your questions general. If you have a specific issue, please feel free to contact us via the information on the screen. And seeing no questions, um, I will thank everyone for joining us today, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.